One of the big things that happens as we get older is we start to notice that we're losing muscle mass. Did you know that your muscle mass decreases by three to 5% every decade after you turn 30 years old? That's a lot if you don't do anything about it. Now, and this is why I have such a huge beef with the fitness industry because the fitness industry is like, really preying on women over 30 who are noticing some body composition changes. They're noticing that they're getting a little chubby and they're struggling to get that weight off. And the fitness industry is just like, yeah, do more hit, do more cardio, do this. And doctors will tell you too. They'll be like, hey, you know, you need to just cut your calories and start doing more cardio. No, wrong thing. Don't do that. You will lose muscle mass. Weight training and mobility will help you to improve your muscle mass. Why mobility? Because the more you can move your muscles fluidly, the better that you can keep that muscle mass on because you're going to prevent injury. Plus, the more that you can keep those joints moving nice and fluidly, also less injury, less chance for frozen shoulder. This is a big issue that happens with ladies as we start to lose muscle mass, but as we start to go into perimenopause, menopause, and the estrogen levels decline. Now, what are the other things I have here on my list? Vitamin D3. Vitamin D3 is great for your muscles, but it's also great for your metabolism. It works like a hormone of sorts, and it helps with maintaining your muscle mass. Protein, 0 0.8 grams to one gram of body weight. So what does that mean? You take your body weight and go, okay, on the high end, if I weigh 130 pounds, 130 grams of protein a day. You can also multiply your body weight by 0.8 and that'll give you a little lesser level if you're like, oh, I don't know if I can eat that much protein. But I highly recommend looking to see where your protein intake is at because this is one of the biggest issues that I see with females as we get over 30 and 40 and 50. Protein goes down because we're trying to cut calories. We're trying to figure out what is wrong. What do we need to do? And chances are we're eating more carbs and more fat than we are protein. And this can cause a big issue with your muscle mass. Next thing, flax or fish oil. We need omega-3 fatty acids. Why? Because they keep our inflammation down, but they also help us with maintaining our muscle mass and our metabolism in terms of our fatty levels in the body, so fatty acid levels in particular. Now, yes, I said less fats, less carbs. Focus on muscle building protein. Now, am I saying no carb? Am I saying no fat? Absolutely not. This is why for a lot of females, Keto doesn't work after a certain point, or keto doesn't work at all, or we hit a wall, because we still need to maintain that protein to help keep our muscle mass up. Now, alcohol, inflammatory foods, these are also things that will decrease our muscle mass. Alcohol in particular, yes, that wine starts to become very nice each evening, and then that wine glass, you know, starts to get bigger and bigger and more full to the point that, unfortunately, sometimes a whole bottle goes into one glass because they make those glasses so big. Have I been tricked by that? Absolutely, and possibly you have been as well. You want to be thinking if you're drinking no more than that tiny, tiny two-finger pour, um, doesn't seem like a lot, but... It's the four to five ounce pores we're looking at here a day, no more than that, because we're going to be messing with our body's ability to burn fat and really utilize muscle and everything we've intake that that particular time frame when we are drinking that alcohol. So not a good thing. Keep in mind that when you start drinking alcohol, your body stops burning fat for 10 hours. That is a big deal. And I think a lot of people don't necessarily think about that. So keep that in mind. I had mentioned decreasing inflammatory foods. Now, a lot of us, as we start to get older, we don't realize that the fries, the chips, the pretzels, all of the processed junk food doesn't do as well for us as it did when we were in our 20s. Not that it ever did well for us, but didn't impact us as much. We are much more sensitive to inflammatory foods. Now you notice I'm mentioning junk food, but I didn't mention the biggie, sugar. Sugar is a big, big factor when it comes to inflammation in the body and is probably the number one addiction that we have as human beings, but it is the one that damages us the most. And yes, the processed food, the the all of the, the stabilizers, all of that stuff, not great for us. Everybody knows that. But when we're looking at body composition change and starting to see our muscles deflate, basically, and the fat start to increase in weird places that we never had before, 
this is alarming and this is one of the things we need to really be paying attention to. So start making sure that your workout programs are including weight training at least three days a week, 20 minutes at the minimum and cut down that cardio. You can still get your heart rate up double. So take your heart rate what it is right in the baseline when you're not doing anything. As long as you're doubling it, you're getting some exercise for the body. Does it mean that you can never do cardio? Absolutely not. I do recommend doing cardio and, and really by lifting heavier weights and working on supersets and things of that nature, you will get more cardio. But you will also be able to train your heart better if you have days that you dedicate to cardio. I like variable interval training, so V-I-I-T, variable intensity interval training, meaning you speed up, you slow down, you speed up, you slow down, but you do it one day a week, not every single workout. Every single workout, no bueno for you. Same thing goes for those of you who love to do cardio like bike, run, hike, things of that nature, it's not wise to use that as your only method of exercise. You want to be mixing in some weight training because you want to keep that muscle mass on. So keep that in mind. Now I'm going to be doing more videos just like this one and helping out with different exercise routines and what's best as you go forward into perimenopause and menopause. So stay tuned for those. But I'm Dr. Janine Krauss and thanks for watching.